I'm hoping that you can hear me. Um, please let me know that you can. I've just been setting my phone up next to my uh, drawing board, but um, please let me know that you can hear me. Um, and um, good evening, everybody. And how um, incredibly exciting. <laughs> Well, for me, it's incredibly exciting for me. Uh, so just give me a bit of a thumbs up or a yes, I can hear you. And then if you can't hear me, I'll sort my microphone out because um, my microphone seems to be the, the thing that I always have issues with. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, it's um, I'm quite excited about this, actually, because um, I'm, I've been wanting to do something a little bit like this for a while. And I know you can't really see me. Oh, you can hear me. Fantastic. Oh, that's great stuff. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to do something like this for, for a while, really. Um, and it's just kind of finding the right subject. It's, you know, all of that type of stuff. So um, we've got we've got the subject here. We've got this gorgeous spaniel. I've given you pencils in the corner up here. I've given you um, the reference photo up here um, and I may well switch those off during the stream if I need to kind of zoom in on anything or anything like that. But what I'm hoping to do is kind of keep the um, the image so that you can see the whole thing. So you can kind of see the whole thing coming together. But if I need to zoom in, I will. Um, what I'm planning to do is work on this for, I don't know, an hour and a half, uh, something like that um uh, each week and um, we can you can either draw along with me or um you can just sit and watch uh, <laughs> you can listen to me waffling on um but uh, obviously we're not going to get everything done in one session and now this ear here that i've got and i'm just going to measure it for you so you will know exactly how big it is the piece of pastel that i'm using is uh 35 by 25 and the ear is kind of around 15 centimeters around that now i would envisage if this was a piece that i was doing as a as a commission and i have done this as a commission i have created this not this particular uh, drawing but this um, this dog i have done as a commission in the past i would um i would envisage that this is probably going to take me around eight or nine hours uh, to create the ear to you know really sort of get stuck in and everything um, you know and, and have it finished um, and the oh gosh I apologize any external noise is my dogs and you'll you'll know my dogs and they wander around <laughs> hopefully they're not going to be really naughty but um, yeah so that that's what I would envisage a piece like this is going to take probably around eight or nine hours to complete um, with you know using the style that i use so um a realism making the hair look really real um and what and i've listed the pencils here now if you don't have the same pencils honestly it really really doesn't matter um you know just pick either pick colors that are very similar to the ones that i've picked um i've picked polychromos and i've picked studios if you don't have studios this is a studio here and the reason i've picked the studios is because they are very hard um, which means when I put them down as an initial layer on the pastel mat, they don't look as gritty. So it, for me, it's about aiding me in getting the, the best out of my the best out of my my paper and my pencils really and that's why I've chosen the studios and it you know it could be you don't have the studios it could be that you don't like the studios if you've got the, the Derwent artists they're the same pencil they're just rounder and they've got slightly uh, larger core um, and what I want to do is um, hopefully you should all have your Vinny Vinny you have to go and be quiet now because you're making some silly noises come on come on off there on, off there, off there. Get your paws off the wires, or we'll all just have the mackle go down, and nobody will be able to do anything. Right, go and lie down. Sorry about that. <laughs> the, the naughty deer hound. Um, so, uh, what you should have is you'll have the um, the image. I'm on a smartphone. Um, are, are you not? I, do, I don't quite understand your question because you're here. You're here on on the live stream, so I'm, I'm not quite. I don't really know and. I don't really understand what you mean. Um, maybe Vicky could help help you out. Um, so, yeah, so you've got your um, your image. And when we look at the image, we can see that um, there are there are a lot of very, very warm colours in there. 
Um, you know, so there are a lot of lovely oranges, a lot of lovely reds. There's some really, really nice colours in there. And there's also a huge amount of these crazy curls. Um, you know, I, I purposely chose an ear that was quite complicated. Um, bon, bonfire, bonfire bonnie. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the, two, the top two ones are for Vishnu, but um, you can still become a patron because all of my tutorials and everything are on the uh, on the first two. And I do so much with everybody anyway, so you wouldn't be missing out. Um, and um, yes, so what I'm going to do first is uh, I want to talk you through the initial layers. Now, if you don't usually use pastel mat, I'm using white pastel mat and it's the board. So it is relatively smooth, but it's got a, a definite texture to it. Um, if you don't usually use pastel mat or if you're using a smooth paper, then it's not really going to... Um, if you're using a smooth paper, then I would say um, you might need to tweak these techniques a little bit. But for pastel mat users, what I'm intending on doing is putting some initial layers down first just to get a really good idea of what it is that we're going to be doing. OK, um, so uh, I've got I've chosen to start off with the, the Copper Beach, the um, Studio Copper Beach, and that's because it's quite a neutral colour. Um, the ear is quite warm, like I said, and this is quite a, a, a neutrally warmish brown. Um, and what I want to do is when I put the marks in, I don't want to put marks in that are then going to kind of give me issues later on because the first layers that you put down onto your paper, they are going to affect what comes through later um, if you want them to. I mean, you can you can kind of obliterate them if you want later on, but I like to make sure that the layers that I initially put down kind of, it gives you a really nice structure and a really nice base okay so um it's not overly sharp some of my pencils are sharp some aren't I don't really like to work with sharp pencils particularly and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on um I'm guessing this top bit of the head up here and coming down and working on the ear uh, and that's what we're going to be working on over the next few weeks okay um so, um, Vishnu, you've only got the Carbothello pastel pencils. Of course you can. Um, absolutely use those. You, it's going to be slightly different for you because you'll probably be working dark to light, but absolutely draw along and, you know, we'd love to see what you um, what you end up with. So anybody can use anything. I mean, this is an hour and a half where we can all just get together and draw together and, and, and have a nice time, really. Um, and it's, um, you know, an opportunity for me to um, scare everybody off by drawing a, a spaniel ear. So my outline... Um, I've actually added in a huge amount of detail in here, specifically actually for this live stream. Um, you can see on the other side, this ear here, I haven't added any detail and this is how I would usually work. I'd usually work with it like this. Um, but here I've put actually quite a lot of detail in here, which is not not usually how I work, but I've added it in just to kind of as, a, as an aid, really. And what I want to do is just make a start. And that is the hardest bit of starting a coloured pencil piece. Well, any piece, I think, is just making a start. Um, and I'm going to make a start up here and I'm just going to put some marks in. So I'm literally just going to really, really light pressure. Um, so anybody who isn't quite sure about light pressure, I'm just going to put my old fat hand in the picture now. Um, and I'm going to show you what light pressure looks like. So light pressure looks like that. So I'm not indenting the skin of my hand. OK, um, that's what light pressure means to me. Um, and I'm just going to, even though this isn't the right colour, I just want to start making marks and making some um, ideas of texture, of how the hair is flowing. And I'm just going to kind of, it's almost like I'm sketching. So I just want to sort of start sketching in some of these marks. Okay. Now, when you're drawing animal hair, it's really, I think the, one of the most important things when drawing animals is to ensure that you follow the direction of the hair and you ensure that the marks you're making on the page are the same length as the hair that you're drawing. So with this bit here, this is quite a long, um, sort of long piece of hair here. I'm just going to turn my sound down on my computer. <clears throat> um, 
so we need to be thinking about long strokes with our pencils okay and we can just start to bring in a little it doesn't have to be photo perfect doesn't have to be exactly the same as the photograph um you know it's just about sort of like getting a a feel of that hair so we've got a bit of a, a shadow in there a bit of a shadow in there and then we're coming down and we've got sort of like a bit of a a curl there and then i'm going to come down here and all I want to do is just put some really, really nice marks on the page so that it looks um, quite quickly like hair. Um, you know, because we want it to look, there's, there's always an ugly stage. There is, there is always an ugly stage with, um, with pencil drawings. Um, and this is the reason why I kind of go with a harder pencil, because it means that I don't get as much graininess and it gives me a really nice base to then work over the top of. So the studio pencils, they are one of my favourite pencils. Um, I love them. I love them on pastel mat. I love them on drafting film. They are, um, they're very subtle. So the colours, if I was using a, in fact, I'll just demonstrate now. If I was using something similar, so maybe something like a, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, if I was going to use something like a burnt sienna. So this is the burnt sienna next to the copper beach. So a burnt sienna polychromos. And if I use the same pressure with a burnt sienna, hopefully you will be able to see the difference. Can you see how much darker it is? And actually it, you can see a little bit more of that grain in there. So I'd need to use even softer pressure um, to then kind of get a, a lighter feel. Um, so... Oh, Wendy, I'm using Copper Beach and I've just done a demo using the Burnt Sienna Polychromos. So that's the reason why I'm using the uh, Studio because it's it's lighter. Um, if I need to add a little bit of pressure in there, I can do and it's not going to go... Um, it's not going to go um, grainy, hopefully. And we're not worrying about we're not worrying about colour at the moment. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a little bit of that tone in there, a little bit of the feel of this um, this spaniel ear, a little bit of sort of loose sketching, if you like. Um, so, oh, now as well, those in the UK, when we get to it's two, it's Thursday today, when we get to eight o'clock. Um, I think it's probably prudent to stop for a couple of minutes and do the um, the, the clap for the NHS. Um, so I will, maybe Vicky, if you give me a bit of a prompt that it's coming up to eight o'clock, you know what I'm like, I just get completely lost in it. I don't want people to feel like they're missing out or being disrespectful. So, um, you know, if we can kind of just have a, a couple of minutes at, at eight o'clock, um, those not in the UK, you might want to clap along or you might want to um, go and get another cup of tea or, you know, something like that. Um, so, um, yeah. So, Vicky, if you wouldn't mind just um, keeping an eye on me <laughs> like you always do. Um, yeah. So can you see how we're starting to get sort of like, um, you know, we're, we're not we're not trying to get detail in there. All we're trying to do is just get a really nice feel for. Um, this spaniel ear and because we're using this nice soft um, well it's not soft it's hard but it's very subtle because we're using this so subtle um, colour um, you know it's kind of it's, qu it's quite nice really um, you know because we've got no harsh lines in there or anything it's just nice subtle colour going in Just seeing. No, I don't think there's anything for me to um, to talk about there. You you're very welcome to ask me questions, and um, if I don't see them, then Vicky will Vicky will prompt me, or somebody will answer them for you. Um, and once I've done this, and this is almost like me, me putting my mid tones in, I guess. And there's all sorts of different ways of creating a piece. Um, for me, with this one, what I wanted to do was just make sure that you. Um, we had something that looked relatively nice, relatively quickly, so that you at the end of the session are going to look at it and feel inspired to carry on next week or carry on, you know, regardless. Um, uh, you know, rather than finishing at, at sort of, you know, half past eight or something and you looking at it and going, well, pff, that's a hot mess <laughs> because a lot of a lot of coloured pencil work at the beginning really can look quite, you know, um, 
not not very pretty uh, and it's purely because of the medium it's purely because it's a it, you know it's a it's a slow medium it's hard to kind of get details and all of that type of stuff in so that's why I've kind of looked at, at creating the um, the initial layer like this um, this is how I would I would treat this if I was doing this as a commission this is exactly how I would treat it um, I um, I would then I'd get the the, the main base in I'd then go in and I'd just start to put some of the really dark darks in and hopefully that's what we'll get to today and we definitely will get there today um, and um, and then what I'll do is I'll start up here and I'll start to work in this bit so this all stays as sort of like one I, I guess incomplete layer this is like a section for me and I would then start up here and I'd start to kind of really bring the detail and the color and the tones and everything in um, but I wanted to initially start with this sort of uh, like a loose freer layer just to get a really nice feeling for the um, you know for this hair and don't worry about getting all of the curls in the right places w what we're aiming for in this piece is the quality of this spaniel's hair and the quality of this spaniel's hair is obviously the wispiness definitely the color and then we've got some like little sort of wavy ringlety bits going on in there as well and th that's really really important to capture uh, those qualities of of an animal it doesn't matter if we get hair going in the wrong direction especially on an ear like this because it's because it's curly it doesn't matter if we put in an extra curl it doesn't matter if we put in 10 extra curls that's not what the focus is and that's not what um you know your client isn't going to be looking at their spaniel and counting the curls it just they just really aren't um what they're going to be kind of looking for and what they're going to be hoping for um is um um you know the the, the the quality of the hair and the look and feel of um you know this this spaniel um i may have missed this but are you not doing an underpainting on this um how uh, sorry tanya how do you mean well it is kind of an underpainting it's kind of sort of like your first layer is almost like an underpainting but i'm not doing anything with um water or pastels or anything like that it's just it's just pure pen uh, pure um pencil and it, it, I kind of I guess you could call it an underpainting um, you know you could use any any color really to do this or for me all it is is it's just about kind of plotting out uh, the texture of the hair so I just want to get a really really nice feel for the texture of this dog's ear and the direction of the hair now if I was doing a, a Labrador ear oh Vincent if I was doing a Labrador ear, I would do exactly the same thing. But obviously, I wouldn't have all of these curls and everything. But I would bring in all of the texture in the Labrador's ear. Um, it just really helps then, it, you know, you kind of working working into areas and, um, you know, adding your colour and tone and all of that type of stuff. The idea was about the problems with getting the fuzzy curly hair to live. Bonnie, oh, I don't, I don't really understand that um, question. Um, Bonnie, are Pablo's harder than luminance? Can you comment on the difference? Pablo's are, Pablo's are velvety. Um, they are completely, they feel completely different to luminance. Luminance feel more sort of um, uh, buttery. Um, although on pastel mat they feel sort of more drier the pablos are i would call them velvety and they are they're they're really really good for helping you kind of smooth color out so they give a lovely lovely smooth uh lay down um and they've got some super colors as well and that's why i've added in a couple of pablos into this because they're going to be really really good for adding in um highlights and for kind of helping sort of smooth color and all of that type of stuff oh, pablo's good for blending yeah they are they are uh so especially on the pastel map so i'm drawing a chocolate labrador at the moment and i'm using the um Oh, it's this one. Hang on. I'm using this. I've brought this in. This is one of the ones that I've chosen for this dog as well. So this is the, the granite rose in the pa in the Pablo. And it's it's brilliant. Um, you know, it's it's such a 
a good pencil for helping to smooth. Now we don't need to smooth at the minute because of the pencil that I've chosen. But once we start to build the layers up, we're starting to get a little bit of grain in there. And we can use something like this to just kind of go over. So some of the lighter, sort of pinkier um, hairs on the dog, so some of the ones that are kind of standing right over the top, we can bring this pinky color in over with the reds and the oranges. And it's gonna, it's gonna create beautiful, smooth, um highlights it's going to be gorgeous um would you use pablo's over the top of luminance say for a portrait at the end um i don't think there's any rule really as to what you would use when um sometimes i will use a luminance over the top at the end because i want more opacity and i want to kind of cover what i've done sometimes i will use a pablo sometimes i won't use either um i think it's all dependent on the artist and what they like Sometimes I use an awful lot of luminance because of the colour, because the colour is is spot on. Um, sometimes I don't use any because um, I've got other other pencils that I'm I'm using that are spot on. I think it's I don't think there's any right or wrong. I think sometimes it would be quite nice to have um, you know a, a set of rules. Um, so, you know, right, if you're going to use different combinations of pencil, this is the one that you put down first, and then this is the one that you put down next, and that's going to give you the best results. There aren't those rules, there aren't those set of rules, because everybody's different, and everybody uses their pencils differently. So it's, it's kind of, you know, if you like rules and you like a process, that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, for me, I just pick up, for me, a lot of it is about feel. Um, so uh, that's the reason why I've gone for the studio to begin with, because the feel, I want subtlety, I want softness, I don't want a load of graininess at the beginning, I just want to be able to sort of put down, um, you know, a layer of texture, could be any colour, I, I, I could have done this in green if I wanted, um, you know, not necessarily going to be doing it in green because that might you know you, you would be able to obliterate it but if you were using a smooth paper you'd be struggling so I <laughs> wouldn't be that mean um you know but you could you it for me it's about feel for other people it might be about color um you know that might be your um you know you, you might have a, a pencil that you go to because it's about color um and and that's why it's so so personal um, you know, you, I, I can't say to you, use this pencil and then use this pencil because it just, you might do the same and then go, well, hang on a second, this feels awful. Whereas it might feel quite nice to me. Um, you know, and I, I, I was saying the other day, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a princess at all. <laughs> I don't act like a princess and I don't look like a princess, but I'm a little bit like the princess and the pea in that I can kind of, everything about my drawing is about feel. So I can really, really feel the surface of the paper through my pencil. And that's why um, I prefer certain types of pencils. And that's one of the reasons, apart from I lose my voice, one of the reasons I can't bear to use pas uh, pan pastels under my pencils, because I can't bear the feel of how they um, they feel underneath the, pe the pencil. And yet you might absolutely love the feel. So it, it is all very, very personal, really. So all we're doing is kind of just drawing a load of wiggly lines, <laughs> um, you know, try and, and this is a this can be a, a bit of a challenge for somebody who's very, very, very controlled. Um, you know, um, if, if you're trying to draw every single curl in the right place, um, you know, you, you might then kind of find this a bit a bit of a challenge, really, to kind of be a little bit looser with what you're doing and just sort of drawing any old curl. If that's the case and you you feel a little bit anxious about it, um, you know, just do what feels best for you. You know, if you need to be drawing every curl in the right place, then do that, um, you know, because at the end of the day, when you're drawing, you need to be enjoying yourself. You don't want to be sort of, um, you know, feeling sort of stressed or anxious or anything like that. So, you know, you, you, you need to do what you uh, what you need to do to feel OK. What's the nearest colour to the and brand to Pablo Granite Rose? Well, I would say the nearest colour, probably, I'm just going to grab a bit of tea. I'd say the nearest colour is probably something like a, oh gosh, well, well, uh, I've got one here, probably something like this. And it used to be called Light Flesh, but I don't think it's called Light Flesh anymore because polychromos have changed the colours. But that's probably a similar-ish colour. Let's just get it out again. Well, maybe not really. No. Uh, yeah, possibly. Possibly that might be your 
um, that might be the, uh, the, the, the nearest, but the, the, the light flesh is a little bit yellowy. <clears throat> but I would say that, or actually, what's this one? This one's probably, oh no, that's a bit yellowy as well. Um, oh, what have we got there? Yeah, they're, they're all kind of, you'll find something that's similar, but um, if you can get a hold of a Pablo Granite Rose, they are definitely worth having. Um, so don't like the graininess or waxiness on first layers. I prefer the smoothest when I see texture. I think there's hard work ahead trying to fill in. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that's and that's the case with pastel mat. But but what happens is because you know that you're going to get over that graininess, um, that's OK. And that's what that's what artists who use the pastel mat kind of come to understand that, yeah, you know, the first layers you're going to put down are going to be a little bit grainy, but that's OK, because I know that I can fill them in. And that is one of the reasons why I've used the um, the studio pencil here, because um, I haven't got graininess. I, I can't really see any graininess in here because of the structure of the pencil. Um, so that has worked up quite, you know, that has worked really quite nicely. Um Oh, that's so sweet, Vishnu. Probably like the artist in your head. Yes, telling you, telling you to light pressure, <laughs> shouting at you all. <laughs> so every time you hear that little person in your head shouting at you, you'll know it's me. Um, and then what I can do now is um, I can just come in and just sort of darken a few of these little bits. So I start to get a little bit of an idea of tone in there as well. Um so just come in very gently and a lot of these are going to be sort of like um, almost black in places. You know, this is this is just literally a, um, a you know, just a, a, a your initial layer, your initial sort of structure of the ear. Um, and when I'm drawing hair like this, I always like to think about it's almost like we need to be drawing it sort of inside out. But we can get in a lot of this um you know, light and dark and all of that type of stuff really, really quite early on, just with one single pencil. And if I need to go a little bit darker, what I do is I don't I don't increase my pressure particularly. I might increase it a little bit, but I'll just go over an area a couple of times. So you end up getting sort of like a bit of a darker, um, a darker area of colour. So I'm just even if you go backwards and forwards, that's OK. Um, you know, here I'm just going to go backwards and forwards, just create a little bit of this bit of the hair there. I'm um, just going to create a little bit of the hair there. I um, I prefer to work freehand. So you can see I've kind of obliterated all of my shapes there, so I can't really see anything anyway, which is why I, I tend to prefer to work with, um, you know, no, no detail at all. Um, so... Um, it, 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 I like to see the whole of the structure of an animal when I'm drawing, um, you know, uh, and uh, because you can kind of sort of see and, and kind of guesstimate where, where everything needs to go. So uh, when I'm doing these sort of darker areas, my pencil is on the paper and I'm just going backwards and forwards and my pencil's not coming off the paper at all. So I'm not changing my pressure. I'm just going over and just adding a few more little layers in there. Um, i uh, not got a sharp pencil, so I'm not continually sharpening my pencil. That's not something that I um, I need to do. I'm um, just going to bring in again just a little bit here. And we don't need to worry really about the particular structure. There might be a there might be a shape of hair in there that you really like the look of. Or you think, do you know what, that has to go in there. That that hair there has to go in there because that really is, you know, kind of encompassing the dog. And then it's very important to get that those those hairs in. Like this bit here on the top of the head is so important to get this little top knot in. Um, because that really, really is part of the character of this this particular little dog. Um, you know, and plus it's it's just it's it's gorgeous, isn't it? You know. Spaniels with that sort of um, that sort of hair, they really are lovely. Um, so we're just coming in here. Um, and just work down a little bit and just start to bring in a little bit of dark. I mean, we're nowhere near as dark as we need to be. But actually, there aren't any really, really dark areas in the ear. And there's a little bit there. And there's one sort of around here-ish. 
Um, and what you'll find is that um, I, I tend to find that uh, I, I, when I put my marks down, I end up with a hair that actually looks um, like it should be there, even if it's not perfect. Um, and that's quite good because you can then decide, you can then go, oh, well, I'm going to keep that in. That curl looks quite good there, actually. I'll keep that in. Um, you know, and you can kind of build your hairs a little bit like that. And it, um, it, it just, they, it works up quite nicely. Um, you know, and you end up being able to build your spaniel ear quite, quite quickly, really. Um, well, quite quickly, over eight or nine hours. <laughs> Um, and you're all gonna you're all gonna absolutely hate me in a second because when I finish doing this I'm gonna get you to get your erasers and rub it all out <laughs> um, you'll all be like what she's just had us drawing all of this stuff and now we're rubbing it all out what on earth is she doing um, and that's all part of the plan <laughs> it's all part of my big plan um, annoying people um, so what I like to do is I put I get get a lot of my mid tones in and then I like to just go in and start to create some really nice highlights in there. And again, it's all about creating something that looks quite pretty quite early on, um, because if, if you if you're working on something and it looks absolutely horrible and you're thinking this ugly stage is going on for a long, 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 long time, um, the likelihood is that you'll either put the put it in the bin um, or you will. um you'll just feel so rubbish about your art. Um, and that's horrible to feel rubbish about your art. Nobody wants to feel rubbish about their art. Um, you know, so trying to make something look as pretty as possible, um, you know, from the from the offset, I think, um, well, it works for me anyway. Um, it's probably, I've got, probably got a really weird brain. Um, <laughs> Bonnie's ears looking amazing. Mine looking like a hail ball exploded on my paper. <laughs> I don't think it does. I don't think it does it all, Jess. <laughs> um, don't forget, you're seeing mine probably a little bit blurred on the on the screen there. So um, you know, I haven't done a spaniel ear in ages either. Actually, I was that's that's another reason for me really really looking forward to this. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of Labradors, um, so a lot of smooth hair. Uh, you know, so um, and I think as well, my my. Um, I think my techniques are always changing a little bit too, uh, you know. So I think um, when you start to use different pencils, you, your techniques kind of change a little bit as well, which is, uh, I always find quite interesting, you know, why, why we do things. Um, but um, so again, just, just trying to bring in colour, but bringing in, bringing in colour and tone that's going to mean something, um, you know, and it's and it's about those lovely. I don't know whether you can see how I'm drawing here. It's about these lovely sort of, um, I don't know, long strokes that you can almost, you can always feel that this little spaniel's hair running through your fingers and getting your fingers tied up in the knots. But um, you know that that again is something that I use a huge amount of the time. Everything in my life is around visualization, so I visualize everything. Um, you know, if anybody was on the, the Zoom call that I had last night, which was fabulous about planning and everything, I talked about me having to visualise doing all of my packaging because I, I have a real issue with packaging. I just can't stand doing packaging. It really stresses me out. So I have to visualise myself doing it. I have to visualise my day. This is what I'm going to be doing then and this is what I'm going to be doing then. And um, that really helps me. And I do exactly the same with my portraits and exactly the same um with um you know the um trying to kind of determine the hair so here when i'm drawing this hair it's all about the softness um you know uh, and, and i'm thinking about the softness of the spaniels here and i can almost i can almost feel that lovely cool silkiness um you know as i'm drawing it so i just had a question through here that vicky's just sent me am i increasing my pressure and no i'm not um it might be an unconscious change in pressure but it's only a tiny tiny one for the darker areas I'm just going over a couple of times so if I'm coming down here and I want to draw sort of like a bit of a um a, a darker bit on the curl I'm just going to just put a couple more little strokes in there to get that that darkish area and I'm still I'm still being quite sketchy and what I find um for me to be really really useful if I'm quite sketchy is that I'm kind of filling in little areas like this and I'm starting to almost get this light source as a curl that I'm looking at on the picture. And I'm starting to almost get a light source in here 
that I can keep and I can work on and I can work towards. And if I can get those in really, really early on, that's that's brilliant because you're kind of halfway there. You know, if you're always struggling with trying to go, well, I've got to draw this curl and I've got to draw that curl. It's it's always going to be a bit of a bit frustrating, really. Um, so and then we can start to, uh, you know, once we've once we've kind of got a little bit of that mid tony bit in and we've got sort of those uh, the shapes and everything in we can then start to look then at the highlights and we can start to look at getting some of those shadows and everything in as well because getting your darks in quite quickly I think is really really important um, you know because that then will determine how dark or how light everything else is um, hello shiny the Derwent artist pencils are identical to the studios they're round uh, and but uh, but they're the same colours. They're the same core, so that the, they feel the same. They're round, but they're a little bit uh, the core's a little bit thicker, and they have a few more colours in with them. Um, so um, uh, for me, it was just because somebody had mentioned the studios that I bought the studios, and I quite like the fact that they're quite thin. Uh, Claire, you will be able to watch this video whenever you want because what I'm going to do is each week I'm just going to add it to a playlist. So all of the um, all of the resources will stay where they are. Uh, the video will stay where it is and you can just come back and watch it whenever you want. If that's what you want to do. Um, so, right, let's just come back down here again. Let's get some of these little curly bits in. Um, you know, you might not get your your the actual shape of your curls in perfectly. And you might then want to, when we start working through the spaniel in and we start to really work on the, um, you know, get, starting to get add detail and everything, we can then really start to, to look at the, the shapes of the curls. But this is just sort of like a basic, um, you know, I'm saying it's a first layer. It's not really a first layer, is it? It's a first sort of few few layers. But um, you know, it just it just means that we've got something you know quite nice in there. Okay, then we've got a bit of hair coming in there, and then we've got some. Again, really thinking about the um, the structure of those hairs. You know, it's coming down, it's smooth, it's coming round. Um, you know, it's just, that's what we need to try and get in. Now, down this side here, it's all a little bit, um, we've got some like little ringlety bits. And that, that might kind of, it might just be a case of just sort of drawing a, a ringlety bit that you think looks like a ringlety bit. And then, do you know what? Actually, that's fine. That will work okay. And then I can just sort of bring in a little bit like that, bring in a little bit like that. And there we go. We've got like a little ringlety bit. And I, I, I can kind of leave that as it is now. Um, because when we come to add the details and, the, and stuff like that, we can just, um, we can build on that. Um, and I know it's not I know it's not the simplest of things to draw, but sometimes if you sometimes if you're a little bit looser and you're not too um, too controlled with your pencil, sometimes it is much, much easier just to kind of get these curls in. You know, you can see here I haven't you know, it's, it's I, they're not amazing. These curls aren't amazing, but then we've only put a, one layer in, um, you know, we've not we've only got one color in. So, you know, we've got quite a long way to go here, but we're still starting to get a little bit of sort of shaping in there. Um, and for me, using a bit more of a loose style um, works well because the hair is loose. The hair's got a lot of movement in there. So if we're too controlled, the hair can look like it's sort of perfectly groomed. And this dog does not have perfectly groomed hair. Um, you know, she's got sort of, she's a bit wild. <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I drew her portrait last year. I drew her and her. She's got a daughter, which is com a completely different colour to her. And the ears are, are almost, they're just wavy rather than curly. Um, and I drew their big sister, who is a Briard. So it was a triple portrait. And I think it was one of the most fun portraits I've, I've ever drawn. The Briard is just the most beautiful, beautiful dog. Um, it's a gorgeous dog. Um, 
when you YouTube artists do small studies as tutorials, say just drawing the eye, nose or ear, they could then give the drawing away as a prize. Oh, yeah, that would be that is a nice idea. And actually, I have thought about that. And, and quite a lot of the the Vinnie that I drew, um, you know, I did the Vinnie live draw. Um, I, I sold him and um, the proceeds of that all went to a local charity in my town to help those most vulnerable with the, um, you know, with the with the. Uh, virus that's going on those who are uh, I think I think it went to buy fresh food to go in food parcels um so that that was quite nice really because it was a piece that I'd never intended to sell and it was a piece that I probably wouldn't have drawn if we weren't all on lockdown so um I just thought you know what I don't want to I don't want to be um you know making anything from this so that's what I did and it was quite nice really um, and then I've had um, I've been doing some Zoom workshops as well, and the half of those proceeds are going to charity as well. So again, we're just bringing a little bit of there. So we're still using exactly the same pencil. We'll all be bored out of our minds. <laughs> I mean, I'd be very happy to do that. You know, if anybody wants to buy my spaniel ear, you can have it. <laughs> you can have it for free. <laughs> Um, I've got I've got a paw I've got a little um, spaniel paw um, from this dog's um, daughter actually I've, I drew that as a live as a live drawing with my patrons um, I've got my the pine martin that I'm doing I'm doing that as a live as well so I've, yeah I've got quite a few pieces actually that um, hanging around sort of half done I've been doing Shetland pony I did three Shetland ponies. <laughs> So they were on my Zoom uh, Zoom workshops, and we did the the Shetland ponies. I had three workshops, and they. Um, <laughs> but Vicky's just sent me a message, and I think it's just probably just for my eyes. Which I think we're going to finish this tonight. <laughs> just to, yeah, okay, not in a minute, Vicky, because I'm going to get you to all rub it out. <laughs> so you're all going to be going what? Um, so actually, I quite like this. I quite like what we've done here. I think this is, um, I think this is, I think this is, this is working okay, actually. I do love, um, I do love the studios. I really, really do love the studios. And if you haven't got them and, or you haven't tried them before, I would, I would definitely urge you to get some because um, they, oh, I just think they're, they're super. I know some people talk about the light fast of them, but the ones that I use are actually, these These are the, the, the ones that are light fast. There are some, the burnt sienna isn't light fast, and there's another one that's not particularly light fast, but the ones that I use tend to be um, light fast, um, you know, and they are, I, yeah, I really like them. The Shetland pony was fun. I know. Well, I've got three, uh, three, all at exactly the same stage, Jess. <laughs> I need to finish one. Um, right. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to really, really annoy you all. And I'm going to get my eraser. Um, so I'm using a putty eraser. So my putty eraser is this one. It's the Faber-Castell um, kneadable art eraser. And I, I find this one to be... I've had a few. I think the Koei Noor one's good. I think the Derwent one's good. I think they're all probably very similar, but I tend to buy the um, the Faber Castell ones. Um, I've also just bought. Let me just find it. I've also bought this one, which is a new one from Derwent, um, and this is their new retractable eraser, which I found actually really good on pastel mat. I found this is actually a really really good eraser on pastel mat. Um, so I may well be using. The, um, putty eraser the kneadable eraser from uh, faber castell and you can see mine's all a little bit grubby um i should probably change it because it's probably got oil in there from my hands as well which probably isn't great um but what i can do is i can i can really really knead it into um shapes that i can then bring into my uh, initial layer here um, and then what I can do is I can start to just pull in some initial highlights. Now, for me, pulling out the initial highlights in a drawing is one of the most important things, um, you know, that, that I do in my drawing. Because, again, it just gives me that structure and it gives me a really good uh, base and, uh, you know, to work from. But it also gives me the form of what it is. So if I'm bringing in a little bit of a highlight into here, it means that that bit's coming forwards. Um, you know, so I can really start to sort of sculpt my piece, um, you know, quite quickly and make it look like it's got highlights and stuff. So if then 
um, you know, I walk away and I come back, it's going to kind of look like what I want it to look like. Um, and this, all I'm doing is I'm kind of using the putty eraser on the, on the paper and then I'm just bringing it back in and giving it a bit of a, a bit of a tweak because what then it, what then I'm doing is I'm kind of, um, <laughs> yeah, another razor you've got to have, I know. Um, uh, you, um, what I'm doing is I'm kind of just kneading the color into the eraser. So I'm not putting color back on and then I can just start to bring in some of these really nice little highlights in here and I can start to get a real feel for the depth, um, and the, um, just how this ear is working really um, and what's really lovely about the uh, studios is that the the well it could be a bad thing but at the moment it's a really good thing the pigment comes off really easily now if i had done this base in polychromos the pigment would come off really easily if i had done this base with illuminance um, we would be having a bit of a hard time to lightly take out some of the highlights because the luminance once it's down it kind of just settles in there and it doesn't want to come back up again um you know so uh that's that's another reason why i would use a harder pencil as my of, as my initial layers because it means that i can then lift up some of these um highlighty bits now some of these highlighty bits i'm lifting up they may not stay highlights for the whole duration of the piece but this gives me you know when we talk about um uh, with art, it's rather easier done than said, but Bonnie always hits the mark. Oh, thanks, Vishnu. <laughs> oh, bless you. I, I, I talk rubbish most of the time. Um, and I've completely forgotten what I was going to say now. <laughs> I need to stop looking at the comments because I've lost my train of thought now. Um, what am I doing? I'm just pulling out these highlights. Um, that's yeah, that's all I'm doing. Pulling out the highlights. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, I think what I was trying to say was the, these highlights don't have to stay, um, you know, and when we're talking about things like this, especially ears like this, where there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of curls, there's a lot of there's a lot of color, there's a lot of wispy bits. Um, we talk about searching for your shapes. Now, what we're doing here is we're actually creating shapes um in the ear so uh and this means that as we're creating shapes it means that we can come back in again then with mid-tones with our shadows and we can start to work into the shapes and that's going to really really help again in creating all of these gorgeous curls and um, and everything so that's that's another reason why i really really like to use this sort of method where i'm bringing in all of these little highlighty bits um lisa the reference photo up in the corner while i'm filming that is an overlay on um obs so OBS is the streaming software that I'm using to stream this. Um, and uh, what I've done is I've been able to put sort of like a um, an overlay with my logo at the bottom here. I've been able to put in the colored pencil bits up at the top and I've been able to overlay the reference photo up here as well. Um, and that's all on my um, OBS on the on the streaming software. Um, you know, you can bring in whatever I can. I can change my my cameras on there. I can have it can pick up all sorts of different cameras if you've got them, um, you know, included uh, in there, if you've got them loaded up. So um, at one point I will set up a camera so that you can see me drawing and talking as well. Um, but at the moment, it's just it's a bit of a faff, really. Um, so um, which is why I've just got the one camera going. Um, how do you? Oh, yeah. Seeing colour doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not colour blind. I just have trouble seeing the colours that you need for realism. Um, right. So what I would say is you don't need the right colours for realism. Um, you can put whatever colour you want in there. This spaniel's ear could be bright pink and it would still look at the end of the day. It would still look real. The thing you need for realism is your tones. So your lights and your darks and your shadow and your midtones. And if you can see your lights and your darks and your midtones, then that is all that you need for your realism. Um, Kirsty Partridge has got a really good, I think, I think it's on YouTube, um, a really, really good quick tutorial of showing you how you don't need colour to create realism. And she does, I think she does a face with just using black and white or something or just one colour. Um, and that's a really good one to have a look at because um, one of the artists that uh, she's been on, she's been on one of my workshops um, and she's one of my patrons and she's the most fantastic artist. I think she's, she wants to start 
doing a little bit more teaching herself but she uses really really strong bright colors in her work yet her work still looks very very realistic so I don't think worrying about color is you know is something that that you need to worry about um, I think making sure that you get your tones right I think that's what it is oh god I need to have some more tea it's lukewarm now what time are we coming up to 7 48 blimey it feels like about five minutes I've been talking but as usual chatting away I hope I'm making sense to everybody because I, I um that, <laughs> that was the feedback that I got from 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 lovely Vicky yesterday my god Bonnie you can talk <laughs> I was like I know I know I just love it I just love talking away um wittering away about completely nothing now I need to be careful here because actually I really like this curl and I don't want to lose what I've got there so I'm just going to do a little tiny little bit of dabbing in there um uh, the yellow one is super soft and that's kind of useless if you need to hold the point better for pastel dust ah right okay I didn't know there was a yellow one as well I just used this kind of bluey grey one um, you know I, I, I really like this one so I'm just going to come in here and just again just bring in a little bit of these curly bits now this uh, taking out these highlights this is what I do all the way through um, creating something like this and what we'll probably do um, not this week because it's not it's not going to have any effect but we're probably going to be using scotch magic tape um, most women can talk yeah I think I can talk more than most women um, so uh, scotch magic tape we, are, we will probably be using once we get a little bit more color down in there um, scotch magic tape is amazing and I learned uh, I first heard about Scotch Magic Tape I think it was probably I think it was 2017 and it's Lisa Lisa Clough Lisa Lackery um, she was using it for I think she was creating some texture in something I can't remember um, and um, I was like oh that sounds good and then I started to use it for creating my the curls in my animals um, and it and it works brilliantly the only thing with Scotch Tape is if you use it too early on when your layers are sort of quite new and especially with something like using the um, the studio pencils where they, they you can see they're coming off quite easily. Um, if you start to bring your scotch tape in now and try to take um, highlights out, it's going to take everything out. You're going to it's going to take everything out. So uh, you're better just to wait um, and get a few of those layers in, um, you know, before you um uh, before you use the the tape and then the tape is a really really good method of getting again getting your texture and everything in there but this I'm I, it's almost like I'm adding another layer in with the eraser because I'm adding in some of these highlighty bits and it's just going to give me some really really nice um, areas to be able to come in and and create some of these highlighty bits in here and then when we've got the scotch tape when we've got a few more layers down we can actually create some like shapes some like really you know spanially curly shapes um you know but we need a little bit more pigment down really before we can do that okay so that's that's looking quite nice actually right we're going to call that finished and i'll say good night <laughs> um spaniel ear done finished <laughs> complete um yeah so I, I think that's looking quite nice really so um what what i would now start to do is to maybe introduce um sort of like um bring in a little bit of the darks I'm just kind of thinking thinking to myself here what what would I do would I just start up here and start to actually create some of these hairs or do I just layer in a little bit and start to make start to build in a few more of those darks and I think that's what I'm going to do I think I'm going to start to build in a few more of the little darks um so are you actually rubbing with putty rubber no what i'm doing is I'm, I'm taking my putty razor and i'm just literally dabbing so i'm just i'm putting it on the paper and i'm just dabbing it on the paper and lifting out if there's a line that i want to take out so if i want to take sort of like a line of color out i will just run the putty razor just gently over the top of where i want it to go so it's almost like a sweeping motion um, you know, like you would with the with the pencil, but there's no rubbing in there at all. Um, I'm not not rubbing. I'm just dabbing. And because we've gone in really, really lightly, um, thank you so much, Wendy. 
because we've gone in really, really lightly with our pencil, um, what happens is that the, the, the pigment of the pencil is just sitting gently on the top of the pastel mat. And we all know about pastel, well, tooth of paper, you know, we know that it's sort of mountains and valleys or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, and, and what happens is actually the majority of the time with your first layer of, of pencil on pastel mat, it sits on top of the, the mountainy bits. Um, and then when you add your next layer or you use your putter eraser, it just lifts those little tiny pigments of of um, of uh, of pencil, whatever it is, pencil dust or whatever. It just lifts them straight off, um, you know, so it's not as if they've gone into the valleys. It's not as if they're stuck in there. But if you're using something like uh, like luminance, it would be much harder to be able to then lift it off because the luminance just is very opaque and they're quite they can get a little bit claggy. Um, which is probably a Yorkshire phrase, but they can get a little bit claggy on the pastel mat and then it's quite hard to take them off. Um, and, I, and I like to have this lovely soft, um, just this really nice soft feeling when I'm starting to draw something. And this is this already has given me the, a really nice feeling for the for the fur in here. Um, so I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. Um, Oh, won't be long, Bonnie, to happy clapping. OK, brilliant. Well, you can all clap. I'll do a bit of clapping here. <laughs> we can all say we've, we've, we've been clapping. Um, yes, please do, um, Vicky, send me a, a reminder at sort of like 30 seconds to. Uh, what's the benefit of using a putty eraser compared to a normal eraser? Well, so if I use a normal one, and I'd maybe go with something like the Derwent one here, um, this I would probably have to rub to get the um, to get the pencil off. Whereas the putty eraser is much, much softer and it literally just lifts the pigment off. It's almost like a little bit of a magnet. It kind of attracts the pigment to it and you don't damage the paper underneath. So you're not damaging the tooth of the paper by rubbing. Um, you know, the, the tooth, the pastel mat is very tough, but it is incredibly fragile at the same time, which I know is a complete oxymoron, but... That's how it is. You can scratch pastel mat really easily, which is why I don't really use sharp pencils. Um, and yet you can throw so much at it. You can throw water at, uh, water at it, acrylics. You can put, you know, pastel, wax, all sorts on it. And it's brilliant. Um, but it can damage quite easily. Um, so I'm ready to remind you at 7.58. OK, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick with my Derwent Studios and I'm going to, ch I've chosen the chocolate. Now, if you're using polychromos, I would go for a walnut brown or I would go for um, probably like a, um, a burnt umber or something like that. Um, but I, I, I'm going for the chocolate. It's a rich brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to bring in very, very gently again over the top of what I've done. So this is where the layering starts and I'm just going to bring in some of those darker areas and I'm still going to be using a nice sketchy feel. Um, so I'm not going to be thinking, oh, I need to get all of these tiny details in. I'm not thinking details at all. On my iPad that I'm uh, following for the, the, the Spaniel, um, it's actually quite small. So I'm looking at the whole of the ear in one go I haven't blown it up yet so I'm not looking for detail or anything like that I'm looking for um, tones so I'm looking for shadow areas I'm looking for um, you know just to bring in a few of those darker colors in there um, even picking up a different colored pencil is going to feel odd so you will have got used to using that um, copper beach um, and um, when you pick up a different pencil, you, it's going to feel like, oh, gosh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about this color, but you'll soon get used to it. Um, you know, and, and actually, once we've done this layer and we've got a little bit of the dark in down here, then you'll probably end up with sort of four or five colors in your hand as you start to put a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there. So um, this one is not it's not all going to be about working entirely over um, the same, you know, with with one color over the area then get another color over the area then get another color over the area it's not going to be like that all the way through this um this i just wanted to kind of get this initial layer in so you all had something that was relatively pretty so we have two minutes to the clap <laughs> i always think that sounds really funny <laughs> but anyway 
but it's so important you know because um obviously my my um my sister had been on the front line and um you know there's there's a, a huge amount of people you know working so hard for us and um you know so it, it's, it is definitely definitely important for for us in the uk absolutely so again just you know we can just it's quite nice this we're, we're just sort of gently gently plotting color in we're not being overly fussed about details or anything like that we're just just nicely nicely just bringing bringing the color in and i think if you don't think too hard and you don't um you don't get too um bogged down with detail and stuff you know you, you're going to end up with sort of like quite a nice sketchy um underpainting here if you like if you want to call it an underpainting um you know and we're starting to get a feel for the um you know for these uh these nice curls and everything so we've got just probably a few seconds left and then we'll just stop i, how, I don't know how long the clap is for a couple of minutes i think uh, for however long you want to do so we'll just we'll just take a bit of a break until um until two minutes past eight so if anybody wants to go and get a cup of tea or anything like that and i won't switch my sound off i'll, I'll clap here and do a bit of whooping <laughs> wake the dogs up okay so coming down here a little bit as well time to clap okay after clap questions yeah okay so i'm just gonna we're just gonna wait until eight o'clock and then i've got all my oh there we go so we're just gonna do some clapping. Whoop whoop. <laughs> I feel really silly doing this. I should be standing outside. But um, I really do. I, I really, really do appreciate what the NHS are doing for us as a, uh, as a, as a country. So um, very well done. Do some louder clapping. Get clapping, doggies. Rishi, get clapping. Hey. I seem to be clapping forever. How long do we clap for? <laughs> it's not very loud clapping, Slippy, is it? Hey. well you can clap with me <laughs> we're all clapping together <laughs> oh dear my arms are getting tired now get the dogs barking they're asleep lisa they're completely they're useless they're useless dogs they're all sleeping see fast asleep they're very tired oh thank you annie <laughs> what's the clapping um it's it's all about oh my arms are getting tired now i'm gonna stop clapping now well done it's um we in the uk um hello shiny we do um we we clap at eight o'clock on a thursday evening um to show our appreciation of our amazing nhs um so uh, that's why we do it which is you know it's it's people go out um you know on their doorsteps and if you live on sort of like a street it's quite nice really because i've because we, we're all in isolation and we're all in lockdown um you know it's quite nice everybody goes out and does a bit of clapping so um yeah <laughs> oh dear anyway so there we go i know i've got wrist cramp now as well i draw all day and i can't even clap for two minutes <laughs> but thank you everybody right okay so back to the spaniel's ears so again i'm um just very very gently um not changing my pressure at all and you can see how i'm holding my my pencil as well um oh that's brilliant lisa you do it at 7 p.m every night that's really nice um you can see how i'm holding my pencil here i'm holding it quite high up um and um you know so it's still really nice and just sketchy and loose so we don't need to be um, we don't need to be doing anything particularly detailed at the moment we're trying to get this lovely lovely feel of the hair in here um 
and uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to keep going until sort of about, about half past eight. Um, if anybody has got any questions, great. Um, I'm going to be doing this every Thursday at the same time. And then once we finish this one, I'll then start on another. Um, if you haven't got the resources, they are in the description of the um, YouTube video. Um, they're in Dropbox and you can, the Spaniel photograph is mine. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and draw the Spaniel and do whatever you want with it, you are very, very welcome to do that. Uh, if you want to credit me as the photographer, then perfect. But, you know, uh, and if you want to sell your Spaniel or you want to do prints of your Spaniel, or do whatever you want with your Spaniel, you have my, um, you have my permission to do that. That's absolutely fine. Um you know, so it is is not the best photograph. It's a it's not a bad photograph, but it's not the it's not the absolute best. Um don't know if it's because of how smooth my paper is, but yours is stunning. But you can the darker and the softer. Mine just all seems to blend together and forget. Right, okay. So if you're using a smooth paper, um I would say um you may need to just increase your pressure very slightly alicia and what you will probably need to find as well is that you probably uh, will need to have a sharper pencil so keep your pencil sharper um, with the pastel mat because it is textured and because actually it is quite a soft paper mine feels almost fabricy um uh, not having a sharp point really helps me um, you know, if you have to keep a sharp point on pastel mat all of the time, you're going to be sharpening your pencils every two minutes. Um, but if you just leave them and just kind of work, work with it, uh, it works. But if you're on smooth paper, then you probably need to use a little bit harder pressure um, and have sharp pencils. Um, oh, that's all right, Annie. Honestly, I'd just I'd give everything away if I could. <laughs> I hate I hate anything to do with money. It just is not. Um, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I'd much prefer to give everything away. Um, so coming down here now, this starts to get a little bit darker down here, but we're not going to worry too much about it. We've got there's a, a little curl here that is quite dark and we can actually get that in quite nicely in here. Get a bit of a. You can see I'm just kind of running over there Um, the the. The trick with spaniel hair is to get it so that it looks looks like hair and the um, the real challenge that m many of us have me included is that our spaniel hair ends up either looking like spaghetti or worms. Um, it just ends up looking really weird. And the reason for that is that what we do is we look for the shapes and we put the shapes in, which is what we're always told to do. You know, look for your shapes, draw your shapes, blah, blah, blah. And we do that and we end up with all of these gorgeous shapes and the curls and everything. But then what we kind of need to develop is our um, using the tones and also using our um, shading. And what I like to think of when I'm drawing spaniel ears or anything that's got curl, well, anything really, but particularly anything that's got curls, we need to look at the light source. We need to look at the shading. We need to say, well, do you know what? Yeah, this is a strip of hair here. That's great. If I just colour this strip of hair in, that is going to look like a, you know, like a, just a shape. But if I look at the shading in there, if I look at it's got its own little light source, so I've got like a little highlight here. I've got some really gorgeous shading coming in here. It's dark. It then comes up a little bit lighter. I've got a bit of a color change. We might have a little bit of hair going over the top of it. If you start to bring all of that in, then um, it, then it starts to look like hair rather than just sort of shapes. Um, and that's kind of what I've I've. Uh, I guess nobody's taught me how to do spaniels ears and I don't think any I don't think any artist really is taught how to do stuff. I think you can follow people, you can follow um tutorials, all of that type of stuff. But I think you you find your own way of doing things. Um you know and I I honestly don't think it's down to uh, you I mean you can share techniques and all of that type of stuff but um, but I think I think I think a lot of people don't give themselves enough credit and they say, oh, well, I've been following tutorials and you've really helped me and blah, blah, blah. And yet, you know, that might be part of it. But I think it's, um, you know, I think we don't give ourselves enough credit for, you know, actually seeing things, 
um, using our pencils in a particular way because nobody I can't teach you how to use a pencil because I'd have to be inside your brain to be able to do that you know it's you that does all of that so um, you know it's 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 all about just um, I yeah, it's about getting the shapes, but then it's about all of that gorgeous shading and everything and kind of bringing all of that in uh, into the mix um, and adding all of that in. And it takes time and it takes development. And, you know, I mean, I did a piece in 2018 that I was, oh, my God, I was so happy with. Um, it won prizes. It was in a couple of exhibitions. It was a, a, amazing. And it was like, do you know what? This is this is me now. This is the, um, the top of my game here. Um, and I look back at it and I look at the spaniel ear that I drew there and I'm like, oh, my God, that's my spaniel ears now are completely different. And it's purely because I've been drawing, I've been developing, I've been, um, you know, um, I've been seeing more. I think the more you the more you draw, the more you see. Um, you know, I've kind of started to understand a little bit more about how my pencils work, how I can get them to work, how I can use my tools to be able to aid me, all of that type of stuff. Um, you know, so every single piece that you draw, uh, you are going to be developing. Even the pieces where you come from drawing it and you just think, you know what, I have not enjoyed any of that, not enjoyed that one bit. You will still have learned so much from it. Um, you know, so I think it's... Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's really important to recognize, um, you know, what how you have developed, um, you know, and not always giving other people credit for how you've developed, you know. So people who follow my tutorials. Yeah, you know, I give you ideas and tips and everything like that. But you've done the drawing. You have taken my crazy instructions, <laughs> wacky colors, and you've created something amazing. And it's your work. It's not, you know. Um, you know, I might have kind of led you a little bit, but it's you that's put the, the, the pencil on the paper. Um, you know, so I think we need to kind of remember that. I'm supposed to be drawing, aren't I? Not giving you all a not giving you all a pep talk. That's what I end up doing. I end up telling everybody off. <laughs> Start liking yourselves, for goodness sake. Stop being kind. Oh dear, I always do that. But um you swear my drawings never have an ugly stage. <laughs> well, that's because I don't want them to have an ugly stage because I don't I, I want them to look really nice because I want to enjoy every single process. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I kind of that's how I've got to kind of know my pencils. And I know that, do you know what, if I use these pencils first, then I'm not going to get that horrible grittiness and I'm going to be able to kind of get some of these lovely, um, you know, lovely curls and everything. In, and it's going to look quite pretty, um, you know, from the off. Um, you know, because I want to sit down and draw and enjoy what I'm drawing. And that's one of the reasons why I do um, the eyes first. I think Vicky sent me a message through before. Um, oh, bye, Rob. Nice to see you. Vicky sent me a message before saying, am I going to do any more of the Spaniel? Um, well, yeah, we can do. We can go on to the eyes and the and the face and everything if, you know, if that's what people want. Um, you know, we can keep on once we've done the ear, we can keep on going if you want. Um, you know, that's that's up to you. Um, I mean, it is quite a nice it is quite a nice photograph. I, I think the colours are beautiful. I think it's the colours that are really lovely. Um, what can you substitute for the studios? Well, so I would encourage anybody who uses coloured pencils to go and visit Karen Hull, uh, visit her website. And I would encourage you to purchase her. Um, gosh, it's her coloured pencil chart where where she's kind of given you substitutes for everything now the only problem there is so just before you go and do it just 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 listen a bit longer <laughs> in case you were just all off there to buy it the only problem is that there aren't really any substitutes for the um studio colors they are these colors are quite unique i would say for the chocolate that i'm using here i would probably i'd probably go for a walnut brown so that is a walnut brown uh, not that you can really see it um let's just put a little bit of the walnut brown on there it's going to be it's going to be a harder pencil uh, it's going to have more pigment comes down but you, the 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 walnut brown is just a little bit more um neutral than the chocolate so it's the chocolate's a little bit richer uh than the walnut brown but i would say use a walnut brown instead of the chocolate um for the oh, the, the best pencil in the whole world is this one which is the burnt yellow ochre and we're going to be using that in some of these light colors up here now i would probably say something like a mixture between a bista and a yellow ochre 
is that bista? I did a, I did, oh, my daughter did a, she did a quiz the other night. She sorted all of my, she's 19. <laughs> she sorted all of my pencils out into colours because I'm so messy. And then she did a quiz and she kept on picking pencils. What's this colour, mum? What's this colour, mum? I thought we should do that. We should do that as a Zoom. We should do a quiz night as a Zoom. That would be amazing. <laughs> right, everybody? Who knows what this colour is? Um, but I think for this one, which is the burnt yellow ochre, I think a mixture of the Bister and the yellow ochre in the polychromos range is a, is, it would probably be good. Um, and then you've got um, the you've got the Venetian red. Now Polychromos has got a Venetian red, but I think it's not quite as light as this one. So it could be that you use a Polychromos version of it, and then you put something over the top, like uh, it could be a cinnamon, it could be an ivory, uh, it could it could again be something like a yellow ochre over the top. So it's just about um, yeah, it's just about having to play. And you're absolutely right, Maria. They are quite, they are cheap. Um, I, I bought the whole set, but um, you can buy them as singles, um, you know, so I would definitely, def definitely recommend buying them as singles. And if you're going to buy your pencils as singles, you know, you can't do better than using the um, the coloured pencil shop, um, the lovely Emma Carriage in the UK, and she ships worldwide as well. Um, you know, so uh, you can't do better than than. Uh, you know, buying them from her. And of course, Derwent have got, um, I think they've got free shipping and all sorts of different things on at the moment. So it's definitely worth um, buying singles. And I would, I would recommend buying the brown. So I would recommend, I did a video on YouTube uh, about the studio. So I, I'd, I'd go and have a look at that. But I would definitely recommend, hold on, let me get them all, the ones that I've got here. I think these are the ones that I'm using for here. I would definitely recommend these ones. So you've got raw umber, You've got, although I told you it was burnt umber and it's not, so I apologise and I changed it and I hoped you wouldn't notice. Anyway, raw umber, copper beech, uh, yellow, burnt yellow ochre, um, Venetian red, chocolate, and then I think I've also got in there. Where is it? Oh, it's it disappeared. There's the bronze in there as well, which I for some reason haven't picked out. But there's bronze as well, and the bronze is an awesome colour. Um, so I'm just going to carry on with the chocolate. Is that the bronze one? Is that bronze? That's bronze there, look. So I used a lot of the bronze on my ram's horn, and I used a lot of the bronze on um, the little mouse that I did, the mouse and berries that I've got on Patreon. Um, the, the bronze is really good because we forget when we're drawing animals, we always think all oh, these gorgeous um, reddy colours, orangey colours, lovely warm browns. If we don't add any of these sort of greeny colours in, um, you end up with something looking really quite pink. So it's really important to get some of these sort of greeny colours in there as well as the warmer tones. Um, I'll put that in there. Right, so let's just come back down here again. Again, I'm not using a sharp pencil, but if you're using smooth paper, you know, I would recommend to keep your pencil um, sharp. Uh, right, let's look down here because this is sort of going a little bit darker down here as well. And I'm using nice soft pressure still. And I just, and we can get a real nice feel for this hair. Now, when it comes to this bit here where there's all sorts of, curls overlapping each other and we've got stuff going on in the background don't be scared okay so don't sit there thinking oh god I've got to get everything in the right place you don't need to get everything in the right place it doesn't matter just whack a bit of color in um like I'm doing here just whack it in um you know get get the color on the paper um, don't worry about detail or anything like that particularly when you're using pastel mat because my goodness pastel mat is going to take you know you know we can we can put i don't know three million layers on there and it's you're still going to be able to go but and that's a big but i don't want to put three million layers onto my drawing that's not something that i'm i'm intending there may well be areas where you do need three million layers when i say three million i'm probably talking about 25 or 30 um you know um so the, there could be areas where you do need all of those layers and those are the areas i find when you have to put tons and tons of layers down on something, I find the reason that I have to put those layers down is either because I've gone wrong 
Um, and when you go wrong on pastel mat, you don't you don't need to rub it out. You just go over the top and you incorporate your mistake into whatever it is, is you've done. And then at the end of it, you're like, well, I didn't go wrong at all because actually it's it's worked out brilliantly. Um, so, um, you know, always be positive about what you're doing. So, uh, you know, that's that's when I would use lots of layers is if I've kind of gone a little bit um, rogue and I'm like, oh, cry, crikey, you know, I, I need to kind of pull that back a little bit. And then I might go over and add a load more layers into there. Um, or it could be that actually something just needs working and working and you, you know, it's like you, you need the depth of something, but you don't want to use too much, um, too much pressure. So when we come to do the eye area up here, we would probably have in quite a few layers here. We're going to be talking sort of 20, 25, um, layers in here, but it's not going to feel like, um, it's not going to feel awful because we'll be sort of sketching it in and then we'll go over it a little bit more and then we'll put a bit more color in and you know before you know it you've got 30 layers in there and, and it's finished um whereas when we come up to here and we do these little bits of hair here i'm thinking do you know what five layers maybe six layers we're done we do, you know when you're doing something like this and you're doing these lovely light areas there's going to be edges of this dog where it's just one layer um, and I'm going to introduce um, the paper stump as well. Um, not just yet because we don't need to, but the paper stump is going to be fantastic for just getting these little tiny flyaway hairs and then that's it finished. We don't need to put tons and tons of layers in. So, um, you know, we've got, that's what's lovely about the pastel mat. We have the ability to just add a few layers or we have the ability to add absolutely tons of layers. Um, you know, and it's, and it's such a, it's such a forgiving paper. You know, if you do go wrong, you just kind of keep going. <laughs> you just keep going until it comes right. Um, you know, that's that's what I do. Um, it's probably why my, my drawings take so long, so I go wrong all of the time. So again, I'm not copying my my photograph exactly, and that that might be frustrating for some of some of you because it might be like, well, what's she doing here? Why is she putting that curl there? What I'm looking for is just the look and feel. I'm just I'm that's all I'm wanting is just how it how it looks. Um, you know, this dog could shake its head and all of its curls are going to look completely different. Um, you know, but the quality is going to stay the same and the color will stay the same. You know, but um, the curls will all sort of fall into a different. Um, a different pattern and that's why I really don't think it's it's necessary to um, you know to get bogged down with with following something unless it's really important to you and then of course you know you can create every single curl, curl exactly as it is on the dog um, you know and that's that, that's that's a personal opinion really that's that's entirely up to you but again you can see with these dark this dark color that I'm bringing in I'm using my thing my my pencil quite quickly um, and I can just sort of bring in these um, these areas of, of darkness down here because this is this is a bit darker down here and then I can start to bring in the um, the highlight again bring those highlights back in um, let's just have a look here ba -da -ba -ba. have you ever drawn your base layers with a pastel pencil and oh no Noreen no <laughs> no I do not use pastel. Um, no, I have. Well, I have. I have. And because um, because I really, really, I think it's always good to try something. Um, because for me, it's all about the feel. Because for me, it's all about the, the you know, how things feel. The, the pastel underneath pencils feels like um, I'm wading through cement. I, I, it's, it sits my, sets my teeth on edge. But the other thing as well is I just have to open a, um, a pan pastel lid um, my voice is gone um, for some reason the dust from pastels just goes straight to my throat and I and I can't speak so I, I don't use pastels at all um, and um, I don't like the feel of them I love looking at them and I love the thought of them and every now and again I think oh, I need to do pastels because they're so quick and and look at the amazing work that people do and then I remember that that I can't speak when I use them so and and uh, I would imagine a lot of people would be happy about that and trying to force me to use pastels but no um so no i don't i just use i tend to use pure pencil um i do use other things underneath um so i have used things like um where are they oops let's get these out so i have used um these so these are the i've got to be careful not to not to drop them on here but these are the um oh what have i dropped now 
Oh, that's all right. Uh, these are the uh, Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2s. And these are wax-based watercolour crayons. Um, and I have used these as, an under, as, a, as a base um, and kind of put them on the Neo Pastel, which are oil pastels. And I've used those as a background. And I quite like those. But pastels I don't use because I, I, I can't. And it's not because I don't. Um, think they're gorgeous because they are gorgeous um what was those colors you recommended colleen they are let me just grab these out again hold on and i have a i do have a video colleen about the studios but um here they are so you have um copper beach raw umber burnt yellow ochre that is the best color in the whole world um bronze another really good color uh, venetian red and chocolate and the, they've got other browns as well but these browns are amazing they're amazing um so yeah and i've got a little video about them as well where i talk about them and i actually draw a swatch which is something i never do um sarah hi sarah glad you could join me i think for me being inexperienced it's hard not to try and copy every curl because if i don't i'm worried it's not going to look I, yeah i i i totally get what you're saying sarah um you know and i and i know you know you're you're wanting your piece to sort of look um look perfect and look exactly like what it is that you're drawing um but you know i i know we were talking the other day as well just sort of tr trying to just loosen up in those initial layers and just getting a little bit of the um you know a sketchy feeling down because what that gives you is it gives you a really nice um start to your piece and then what you can do is you can then start to tighten up and you can start to really bring in all of those details and you will find it easier working on a base where you've kind of got the um the the feel of the hair i think i mean this hair here that i've got going on here it's starting to look really quite nice and soft there are areas that are kind of sweeping across there are areas where you can see there's a highlighty bit in it you know it's it's starting to kind of have a, a quite a nice feel um to it um and that's that is purely because i've just been very sketchy and i've just kind of been you know having a bit of an idea of where the darks are i mean it might help you to when you do your line drawing to be really accurate with your line drawing so that when you start to put your initial colors in your pencil strokes are going in all of the right places rather than me making up mine uh you know as i go along um I must just mention that if I hadn't watched your amazing tutorials, I would not have noticed all the different colours. Oh, that's nice, Bria. I, oh, God, honestly, I'm like, I'll be looking at a drawing and I'll be like, oh, uh, I'm seeing pink there. And, and then as soon as you start seeing colours, then you start seeing more colours and it just go, all goes a bit crazy, really. And I do think that as you, the more you do, the more you see and the more colours you start to incorporate. And then I think you do... Um, you do then sort of start to develop a little bit more and maybe stop using all of the colours, um, you know. But, uh, I mean, the, the the Labrador that I'm drawing at the moment um, is a chocolate Labrador. I have not used brown, I don't think, once. It's all blue, purple, pink, but he, but he looks brown. Uh, well, I think he looks brown. He probably doesn't look brown at all. He probably looks blue purple and pink to be honest but um, <laughs> um you know but it's it, you kind of get used to your colors and you kind of start to understand how um how, you know how your colors can work and somebody was hang on i'm just get these messages back from vicky um and he asked what pastel mat do you use um, so the pastel mat is the Clairefontaine pastel mat. There's only one maker pastel mat and it's Clairefontaine, but I tend to use the board because it's smoother. Um, it's just something that I prefer to do. Um, but um, yeah, when it comes to colours, a lot of people ask me, you know, what my process is for colours and how do I how do I choose colours? And it's um, it's. Uh, I tried to explain how how it works. So I've actually picked out colours for this one before I've been drawing it. And I, I find that particularly hard. Normally, I just sort of start and then I choose my colours as I'm going along. Because um, what happens to me is when I'm drawing, uh, even if I'm talking like this and I'm kind of recording something and I'm, I'm recording the voiceover, um, as I'm talking, I'll be thinking about the bit that I'm going to be doing next. So as I'm drawing this bit here and talking about it, I'm then also thinking about 
uh, this bit up here, for example. So I'm drawing here, talking about here. I'm thinking about this in my head and I'm thinking, right, I need to have like a ready color. But it's also got a bit of it's almost bluey up there and there's like a, a paler bit that comes in there. And then in that sort of split second about me thinking about here, all of these things kind of float through my head. So I'm, I will pick a color. So I'll go, right, well, I could use Venetian red and I could use a little bit of the chocolate in there. But then if I use chocolate, then this might happen to the color that I'm going to choose a little bit later. Venetian red, I think I'll choose. But actually, I think I'm going to use dark sepia in there because it's a little bit greeny. But then if I use dark sepia with the Venetian red, it might go too greeny. Right, OK, so I'm going to ditch the dark sepia. And all of this is going through my head as I'm drawing and talking about something else. <laughs> so it's really, it's quite difficult to explain how I choose my colours because they kind of float into my head as I'm as I'm sort of thinking about them. Um, and, I, and I'm not just thinking about one colour. I'm thinking what the colour will do if I'm drawing over the top of another colour. And then I'm also thinking, well, if I choose another colour to go over the top of that, what then will happen? So I've got all of these kind of variables going on in my head before I actually pick a colour. Um, you know, and, and, and trying to explain that to somebody, and well, how do you pick that colour? It, it sounds like I'm a complete and utter mad person, but that's how I do it. And it happens within like a split second. Um, I think I am a mad person. Um... As in, if hair is going one direction, try make... Oh, I think you're talking to somebody else. Hello, Shiny. Um, you're talking about the sketchy feeling. I have never done sketching, so I wonder, would you recommend practicing sketching? Yeah, well, do you know what, um, Kate? I've never really... D I did do sketching at school, and I, I, you know... But I don't... This isn't something that I've always done. This is something that I've kind of realised helps me in the beginning stages of a drawing is to be quite sketchy like this and just get a real feel for what it is that I'm doing. Um, and this isn't how I used to draw. I used to be quite controlled and go straight in and try and get the details. And I think just as I've kind of developed and worked out m my style and how I work, um, this is now sort of this works for me, um, you know, and and I I think it's always it's always a bit tricky, isn't it? When you're sort of, um, you know, talking about techniques and stuff, because I might be doing something here that feels completely alien to you, um, you know, and I think it's really important when you're drawing that you enjoy what you do, um, you know, so if what I'm doing doesn't work for you, then I would I would seriously, you know, suggest that you try something different, um, you know, not necessarily try for, you know, go to a different artist, but maybe just tweak some of my my techniques or just don't use some of my techniques. And, and you know, and of course, you, you, you might be following a few different artists, um, you know, and then what you can do is you can just kind of take some of my techniques, some of somebody else's techniques, and you put them all together and you tweak them all and then they become your techniques. Um, you know, so no technique is unique. I mean, what I'm doing here is not unique. There'll be loads of people who do the same thing. But, you know, not not because we've all been taught by the same person, just because maybe we have a similar brain. Maybe ev all of the people who use this sort of thing are completely mad. <laughs> um Oh, Carol, a great chess player? No, I was in the chess club at school at the age of ooh, 13, 14. Um, and the only reason I joined chess club was so that I didn't have to go outside. <laughs> so I'm not very good at kind of strategic thinking. I'm good at strategic thinking for businesses and I can see stuff, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good like that. But where it comes to uh, planning and all of that type of stuff, rubbish. Um, you know, give me Scrabble. I'll, I'll take Scrabble insta uh, over chess. <laughs> um, if we credit our good drawings to your instruction, when you say no, it's you. So is that your way of also saying if we do a crap drawing, it's not your fault either? That's exactly it. Hello, Shiny. You have got me. <laughs> yeah. No, what I'm saying is, you know, um, it's very easy for somebody to create. No, it's not very easy. It's very easy for somebody to say, oh, I, th I think I think it's about none of us like to say nice things about ourselves and about our art. So it's when you've done a tutorial, it's then very, very easy for somebody to say, well, it's a tutorial. You know, it's it's um, you know, you've taught me how to do it. I've just followed your steps and, you know, that's it. And what I'm trying to say is 
you kind of give all of the credit to the person who has has written the tutorial, which, you know, it's fine. But the, it takes a huge amount of skill to be able to listen to somebody like me. So if I'm telling, this isn't how I always do my uh, tutorials. I'm, um, I'm more sort of put this colour here and put this colour there. But um, <clears throat> you've got to listen to what I say. So before you put pencil to paper, you have to listen to what I say. You have to compute what I say, understand what I say. And then you've got to put everything that I say down onto the paper. Um, and then I'm I'm ahead of you and I'm working on something else. Now, to be able to do that and, com com you know, complete a tutorial, you know, listening to somebody who you might not think in the same way. I think that is a massive skill. And I think, you know, people who do tutorials need to be given, you know, you need to take credit for what you've done because it's not just, oh, you've just been copying what another artist has done because you've got to understand what they've done, it, why they've done it. You've then got to kind of interpret what they've said and put that on the paper. Um, you know, so I, I think I think you should give yourself more credit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, is there any technique you recommend to try and get the right colours? I'm normally graphite based and struggling with red labradoodle. Um, colours, I would make a strong suggestion that you um, you look at colour mixing and you look at what colours, complementary colours you can use <coughs> for the... Um, the main colours that you're seeing. So if you're doing a, a, a red labradoodle and it's quite, um, it's probably sort of this, this sort of um, like crazy reddy orangey colour, um, then what you, what the best thing for you to do is to understand what colours will go with that crazy orangey red colour. What colours can you use to complement it? Um, because what you'll have is you'll have all of these little nuances and little, um, it's about, well, it's going to be curly, but you're going to have areas where they're a little bit darker, areas that are a little bit lighter. Now, if you've got something that's quite orangey, knowing that you can use a violet in over the top of that orange to be able to create a, a, a fantastic shadow and it not look really weird, then that that's really, really great for those darker areas. But you, you might not know that violet is a really good colour to use with um, your oranges. Um, you know, but if you kind of get, oh, I've got one here actually, <clears throat> if you get like a colour chart, um, what you can do is, just put this down here, if you've got, I don't know whether you can see this, hopefully you can, if you've got a colour chart and if you've got your red oranges here, so if this is your lab, oh it's all dusty, hold on, <laughs> just dust everywhere, uh, um, yeah, so if you've got your orangey reds, orangey colours here, um no what am i talking about here so you've got your orangey colors on this side here oranges and yellows <clears throat> what you've got is you've then got your opposite um opposite colors and your opposite colors are your oops got them yellowy orangey um you get your hang on uh, you start to you start to be able to kind of pick up what colours are going to go well with what it is that you're working on. So if you've got your orange here, actually the direct split complementary it's called the, the the you know the one directly opposite is blue. But then you've got the lilac on one side. Again, that's very dusty. You've got the lilac on one side, and then you've got green on the other. So sometimes with your oranges, a greeny colour, like I was saying, to use the bronzy colour in with these oranges, that can be really really good. Um, a lot of the time uh, using a violet in over the top of your oranges works brilliantly um, you know so um, understanding how your colors work I think is is really really important and that kind of comes with just drawing you know your drawing hours you'll st you will start to to play around with color and you'll start to kind of really understand how color works for you and what pencils work for you and it's just about having a play around and having a having a bit of a an experiment really um so i'm just going to do a little bit more down here and then um yeah so color again you know there's all sorts of different ways you might decide that you want to um you might decide that you want to use a color picking chart you know it it might be that do you know what you you really really struggle picking uh, colors so you might use one of the apps 
um, I think there's colored pencil picker that a lot of people use and they love it. Um, you know, and it's an app and you hold the app over the top of your photograph and it will tell you not only what color it is, but it will tell you how many layers. So it will give you like three different colors that you can layer over the top of each other to get that color. You know, if you struggle with color, that is the most fantastic thing. Uh, you know, to be able to use. And then what will happen is you'll start to get used to that. You'll start to, um, you'll start to really understand colour um, and, um, you know, you'll start to then be able to, um, you know, pick your own, pick your own colours. And it's just about, um, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, really. So I've just had a time check from Vicky. <laughs> she probably wants to go to bed. <laughs> Sorry, Vicky. Uh, yes. So what I'm going to do is we will um, we will stop here. It's pretty, quite a good place to stop, actually. Um, I'll, I'll kind of keep drawing as I'm talking um, and I'm just going to uh, recap very, very quickly what we've done. So I've used the studios. I've used two pencils today. Um, so I've used Copper Beach as my first pencil as a, as a soft layer to, to put down the initial colours. Um, I've kind of concentrated on just getting some texture in there, um, bringing a little bit of the darkness in there. And then I've come in and I've used my putty eraser, oops, which again, we will do uh, when we come back the next time, we'll kind of start with the putty eraser and just bring in again, just kind of make sure that we keep keep those highlights highlighted so that we don't lose them. Um, you know, and then we start to get a little bit more structure, the more um the more pigment we get down on the paper, the more pigment we can take out, which means the more uh, little shapes and everything we get in there. Um, and then what I've done is I've come in and I've used the the chocolate again, the studio, because it's nice and soft. We don't want any grittiness or nastiness or anything like that. Um, and I've just started to bring in a little bit of darkness in there so that we've got we've got an ear that looks looks quite nice really and um, there's an awful lot more to do huge amount more to do um but next week what we can start to do is just bring a little bit more color um up into this top bit and we can work on this this top knot here bring in those lovely colors and we can get that sort of um brown through red through sort of like that orangey yellowy color at the top there uh so i hope uh you have um Oh, how do you know which colours clash? I know you've mentioned in your video. Well, so Alicia, if you think about your normal colours, so you wouldn't use you wouldn't use an orange with a blue over the top of it because it's going to go green, unless you want green. Um, you would use an orange with something that's more violet based because then it's not going to go green. It's just going to go a little bit darker. And that's 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 what's good about experimenting. You know, we're using your pencils and experimenting with them to see, you know, what, what kind of happens. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it um you know you're welcome to send me any questions if you've got any questions or anything like that and we will pick this up again next week um and we will start to bring in like i say we'll start we'll do the we'll work on the top knot next week i'll maybe zoom in a little bit more and we can kind of work on that um and then we'll start to kind of now that we've got this base in here we can now start to bring in some detail and we can start to work in some of that detail in there so um yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you all join me again next week. So have a lovely evening. Have a lovely Friday and weekend. Don't even know what day it is today, Thursday. And I will, um, yeah, I'll see you all next week. So bye, everybody.